Hello and welcome to this video on multiplying and dividing numbers in standard form. So we've got two numbers in standard form and we saw what standard form was in previous videos and we're multiplying those two numbers in standard form together. Now we could just write each of the numbers out explicitly, convert them to normal numbers. So this would be two followed by four zeros and that would be four followed by six zeros and then multiply them together. And then we could convert back after to standard form. But we can multiply these directly. If we're multiplying all these four things together, we can choose in what order we multiply them together. So let's say we did the two times the four first, that gives you eight. And then we could do the 10 to the four times by the 10 to the 6. Now we know when we multiply two things together that have the same base, the 10 is the same, then we can add the powers. And 4 plus 6 is 10. So just be 10 to the power of 10. Now let's check, is this in standard form? Well yes it is, because that number is between 1 and 10, excluding 10 itself. And that is 10 to the power of an integer. So that is in standard form. Let's do these examples here. It does get a bit harder. We got 3 times 10 to the 4 times 2 times 10 to the 5. So we do the same thing as before. We do the 3 times the 2, which is 6, which is a number between 1 and 10. And then 10 to the 4 times 10 to the 5, you add the powers, 4 plus 5 is 9. So that's a relatively simple one. What about this one? This one is a bit harder. We've got 4 times 10 to the 6 times 3 times 10 to the 7. Now, if we do our usual thing, 4 times 3 is 12, and 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 7, we add the powers, 6 plus 7 is 13. Now, the problem this time is that this number is not in standard form, because that number there is not between 1 and 10. So what we could do is we can make that number 10 times smaller, so that it is between 1 and 10. So if we make it 10 times smaller, it's 1.2. Now, if we made that 10 times smaller to compensate, we have to make that 10 times bigger. So if we times that by an extra 10, we're going to have one more 10, so that power is going to go up by 1. So it's going to be 10 to the power of 14. And now that is in standard form. So you multiply these as before, but you might have to do adjustment to make that number between 1 and 10. What about the next one? We got 7 times 10 squared times by 6 times 10 to the minus 6. So we do the usual thing, 7 times 6 is 42, and 10 to the 2 times 10 to the minus 6, well we do 2 plus negative 6, which is 2 minus 6, that's 10 to the minus 4. And then we do the same thing as before, we need to make that 10 times smaller, so it becomes 4.2, and that needs to become 10 times bigger, so the power goes up by 1, minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. Now these other ones, we've got some dividing going on here. So let's write that out, 8 times 10 to the 10, divided by 2 times 10 to the 3. Now this time we're dividing the two things, so we can again separately divide the numbers and separately divide the power expression. So 8 divided by 2 is just 4, and then 10 to the 10 divided by 10 to the 3. Well, do you remember when we divide power expressions, we subtract the powers, 10 minus 3 is 7. So it's 10 to 7, and that's in standard form, so we're done. What about the fifth one? This one's a bit harder. 3 times 10 to the 9 divided by 6 times 10 to the 5. So we do 3 divided by 6, which is 0 0.5, because it's half. And then we do 10 to the 9 divided by 10 to the 5. We subtract the powers. 9 minus 5 is 4. Now, this is not in standard form, because that is not between 1 and 10. So we do the opposite this time. We want to multiply this by 10 to get it between 1 and 10. Now, because we made that 10 times bigger, to compensate, we have to make that 10 times smaller, so the power goes down by 1. What about question 6? We got 2 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 8 times 10 to the minus 7. So we do the usual thing. 2 divided by 8, that's a quarter, which is 0 0.25 as a decimal. And then, because we're dividing these things, we have to subtract the indices. So minus 3 minus minus 7, let's be very careful, that's minus 3 plus 7, because we're subtracting a negative. Minus 3 plus 7 is 4. So we get that. Now, 
we need to make that 10 times bigger, so it's between 1 and 10, so it becomes 2.5. So we have to make that 10 times smaller, so it becomes 10 to the power of 3, we reduce the power by 1. And now this final one, a bit more algebraic, x is b times 10 to the n, and b is between root 10 and 10. Find x squared in standard form. So we're doing x times x, which is b times 10 to the n times b times 10 to the n. You're just timesing it by itself. Now we do the usual thing. Just because it's algebra it doesn't make it any different. b times b is b squared. And 10 to the n times 10 to the n, we add the powers, n plus n is 2n. So it's 10 to the 2n. Now this isn't in standard form because we think about b squared. If b is between root 10 and 10, when we square it, it will be between that squared and that squared. So it will be between 10 and 100. So b squared is between 10 and 100, but we want it to be between 1 and 10. So if it's between 10 and 100, we need to divide it by 10, so it's between 1 and 10. So we divide it by 10, we could write a tenth of b squared. Now, we made that 10 times smaller, so to compensate, we need to make that 10 times bigger. And we know to make that 10 times bigger, we increase the power by 1. Now, when we increase 2n by 1, it's not 3n. That would be 2n plus n. We want 2n plus 1, so it's 10 to the 2n plus 1.